let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we finish this 14th week of Ordinary Time and we finish our journey, at least for now, through the book of Genesis. Help us to understand what we have learned and help us to live as you call us to live. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, as you heard in the prayer, this is the last day that we're going to be looking at these readings, this set of readings from the book of Genesis. So it's an end of the entire journey of the call of Abraham, who at the time obviously was called Abram, all the way to the story of Joseph. And the way the story ends, of course, yesterday we talked about there is a reunion with all the brothers and the father. Remember, the father is Israel, whose real name is Jacob. And God actually continues calling him Jacob. And in fact, when Moses encounters God, he still calls him Jacob. But um, Israel is the name that we remember Jacob, and Israel means struggles with God. So we remember all that and always keep that in mind. You know, if you ever listen to Dennis Prager, he talks about that a lot. Israel means struggles with God. So now what happens is Jacob goes down, or I'm sorry, after I just explained all that, Israel, uh, also known as Jacob, goes down to Egypt And now you have the establishment of the Hebrews who are living in Egypt. Uh, Everything is going well, and we are looking at what is known as a foreshadowing in in liturgical worlds, or actually literary worlds, because now we see here, this is how the Hebrews ended up in Egypt. And that sets up, we're we're actually going to look at that next week with the whole story of the Exodus, which happens where uh, the Egyptians get along very well with the uh, people from Israel, getting well, everything's from the Hebrews, they call them, all the way, everything's going fine, and then all of a sudden there is a change. But we'll talk about that next week. But it's something for us to understand as well. Because what's happening here, within the concept of Israel, um, or a concept of, of, I'm sorry, concept of Egypt, you have Israel that is uh, a nation that is there. It's something that we also recognize today with the Jews. The Jews are a nation unto themselves, but for many centuries they didn't have a land on which to be that nation. And that was, you know, from the fall of Masada, uh, to 1948. Now, there's other exceptions as well. There are other times during the Babylonian exile and things like that. But for, you know, this is one of the important things. Like, you know, someone once brought out, I mean, find, he, he said, find me the Canaanites or find me the Phoenicians. Those cultures, find me the Babylonians. Those cultures do not exist anymore. And the, um, the, the people of those cultures were absorbed into the cultures that are around today. Many of them you'd find in modern day Iraq. But the Jews were always this nation that had this very interesting reality of being a nation, whether they were on the land or not on the land. On the land, they felt the special blessing from God. And when they were off the land, they couldn't um, sacrifice animals in worship in the temple, but they still had this union with the Lord. And that exists even today. And it's a fascinating reality. One of the fascinating bits of history I always like to bring out is Vilnius uh, in Lithuania was considered, I think it was called the Jerusalem of the North. It was a very strong, uh, strongly rooted area of many Jews. And among the Jews who uh, came, who could trace their heritage back there were the parents of the people who became known to us as the Three Stooges. The Three Stooges were uh, actually could trace their roots to the Lithuanian Jews. And uh, interesting enough, uh, not only were they, you know, everyone knows how devout they were as Jews, especially Mo. Everyone knows how much they took their faith very seriously. But I don't know if you're aware of this or not, the Three Stooges were the first people to mock Hitler. They did, I, uh, I, I, 
uh, I forget the, the name of the short, but they were the first people to mock Hitler. One of the uh, great advantages of doing a recording is you can stop it and look it up. So I did. It was called uh, You Nasty Spy, N-A-Z-T-Y, You Nasty Spy. And they did that in 1940. I understand that this was long before, well, not long before, but a year and a half before the United States got into the war. Um, but that's when they, they mocked Hitler then. And there's an important thing to know about comedy. Uh, monsters, when uh, are made fun of in entertainment and comedy, are no longer monsters. And so I don't know whether that went into their thinking, but they realized the importance of bringing comedy as a way of fighting Hitler. And so that was something really fascinating, the Three Stooges. Uh, we're going to talk more on the other side of the break. We will be right back. Don't forget to tell others where they can find our program. You can hear us on WEZE 590 AM and WEZERadio.com at midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, Eastern Time. We then podcast the program on your favorite podcast platform and at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also hear us on our parish website, st for St. Anthony Alston.org. That's St. Anthony Alston.org. And let others know where they can find us and spread the word and subscribe to our podcast. And don't forget, you can find us at catholicaudiomedia.com and also at stanthonyalston.org. And please check those out. And please let us know what you think. What do you think of the program? I'm getting more and more comments now, a little bit here and there. And that's wonderful because more and more people are listening, and that's great. So let us know what you think. So anyway, that was a principle. It, it was a principle that um, Boris Karloff recognized. And that was, he said that, Basically, uh, Frankenstein ended with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, and I think I think they met Dracula and then the Mummy or, or something. I forget the exact list of uh, of movies. But when Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, he's new. He says that's the end of Frankenstein because he says once you mock the monster, the monster has no more power. I'm sure that the Three Stooges were aware of that. And so they did this, as we all know, this rather funny program, but they were the very first to mock Hitler. And you got to realize at the time in the, here in the United States, there were people that thought Hitler was great. You need to understand that. A lot of people don't. And um, maybe by 1940, they had some concerns, but there is a story I've talked to you about before. And I'm sure you can't find any information about this person after this event. But there was a woman from West Covina, California, who in 1936 went to the Olympics, the famous Jesse Owen Olympics, the, the Olympics over in uh, Berlin. And she was able to kiss Hitler. And she came back here to the States and she was known as the woman who kissed Hitler. Now, can you imagine that woman being known today? Oh, yeah, that's the woman who kissed Hitler. No, that wouldn't go anywhere. People would say, no, this is absolutely. Why would she kiss Hitler? Absolutely unacceptable. But obviously, and if you read the stories, there are short stories in the different newspapers. They're not saying anything bad about her at all. It's just this is the woman who kissed Hitler. And it, it's fascinating because back at that time, there were many people in the United States who were not, uh, who did not see Hitler as the monster that he was. And you, now you take that reality and you add to it what the Three Stooges did as Jews who understood the danger of Hitler who understood the trouble of Hitler and understood they had a tool. If you mock the not monster, he loses power. And so whether that was into their thinking or not, these members of the Jewish faith, these Jews who are part of the nation of the Jews, even though they didn't have the political uh, the, the, the land of the Jews at the time. Israel obviously hadn't been restored yet until 1948, eight years later. And they took that opportunity as Jews to say, we are going to do our part. And so they did. 
And again, this is before the United States got into the war. It was 1940. This was just after the invasion of Poland. So when we look at that and we, and, and we see that, we see that all of this understanding as the Jews being this uh, nation, even if they were off the land, starts with Abraham. We see now it goes from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, also known as Israel, and to Jacob's sons, who are the 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 be, who form the twelve tribes of Israel, all of that starts there, and even to this day, that still affects us. Even to the point that when you sit down and watch you nasty spy from the Three Stooges, that really does have a connection all the way back to Abraham. Very powerful reality. Well, next week, as part of this, we're going to be looking at the Book of Exodus. So now we're going to look at the next stage in this story, which we all know, but we're going to look at the way it's it's put together of things turn against the Jews and the Hebrews, actually, at the time, turn against the Hebrews, and we all know how that goes along, but that's what's coming up next week in, in, the, in the daily readings. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day, and from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, this is Father Robert J. Carr. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.